Hello everybody, so, um, just to give you an idea, it's a bit, uh, shop day when I got back, and, uh, you know, just, you get your weekly shopping, you do all that usual shite, and, uh, you get back in, you watch something on TV, and you decide to fire up the old, uh, gas-powered sea biscuit, also known as your PC, and uh, you hop on things like Discord and all the rest of it, and then you hit with the news. PGI acquired by, uh, EG7, uh, some kind of global investment firm. And you, you think, really? Interesting. And the the only thing I think is, well, this this can't be good. This can't be a good thing. And uh, if, if you haven't heard the news yourself, uh, basically they were bought for about 24 million. And there's a promise of another 48 million uh, contingent on performance, apparently. What this performance is, I don't know. Maybe sexual acts performed on the owner of EG7 or... Uh, Possibly producing a new map for Metcore Online. We don't know. The the uh, the requirements are, are currently shrouded in a mystery. But uh, what we do know is that uh, there is a video uh, talking about the acquisition, uh, mainly just pitching the company itself and having a little bit from Russ. And really, that's what I want to talk about because the whole business side of, of it is not my domain. I don't know as much about ownership, how much... Uh, for instance, I don't know the exact percentage ownership now that uh, this group have. I also don't know uh, exactly what the arrangement's going to be. They don't tell us that. There's no reason for them to do that. There are a couple of interesting notes, though. In the video, you will hear uh, Robin, who's the uh, the smartly dressed man who's doing the presentation, will uh, talk about uh, future releases on other platforms. So specific, more talking about MacWarrior 5, but also mentioning console releases, which I thought was an interesting note to make. Does that mean, although this isn't guaranteed, but does that mean... MechWarrior Online and MechWarrior 5 is potentially moving over to next-gen consoles, although I doubt MechWarrior Online would. It would look like ass on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, and, and even the Switch, it would look like shit. I mean, the, the, the engine's so out of date now, most people are just not going to bother. Even if it is free-to-play, they're just not going to bother with it. MechWarrior 5, on the other hand, I could, see, I could see them porting it over to consoles. It's such a simple game compared to previous numbered MechWarrior releases that... Yeah, it, it could be moved over without too much hassle. Bit of auto-aim in there and such, you're good to go. But Russ's presentation was the part I was most interested in with this, is that he, he talks, obviously, about how it's great, this, that, and the other. They've been around for 20-plus years, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you've made one game, basically, uh, outside of that Die Hard mod. Uh, and you worked a bit on the awful Duke Nukem Forever and some other contract work that you've done. But that, that doesn't mean that you've got this great, fucking uh, length and depth pedigree of, of artistic and creative talent in there because you sacked most of those people and you've brought in other people since and apparently your studio is only around 60 people at the moment. So he mentions that uh, they've got this investment which on the face of it, $24 million, it's fantastic. It, it's it's a shot in the arm, surely, for Mech Warrior Lion. We're now going to see new content, new maps, new modes, new mechs. Uh, maybe some upgrades here and there, performance optimizations, or the the works in MechWarrior 5 will also get some big investment as well. You know, so some more expansions, and uh, you know, maybe making the game more in depth, or maybe expanding and fleshing out the modules more for the community, that kind of thing. But then he says original IP, and that's the thing that suddenly made me realize, yeah, this 24 million isn't going into their existing products. As far as Russ is concerned, I'm calling this now. Most of this money is just going to go into this original IP. And some people, I think, may have already correctly called it that it's transverse. And for those of you who don't know what transverse is, it was their attempt at piggybacking off Star Citizen's early... I mean, we're going a long time back, like 2013, 2014. We're going back to a point where they tried to piggyback Star Citizen's success through crowdfunding. They tried to make their own space game. It was laughably awful. And uh, it, you, you don't have to look far to find transverse articles and stuff talking about just how fucking dreck it is. But it seems like this is what they're now going to use most of this $24 million for. I, I can't honestly see Russ sinking anywhere close to $2 million even into MechQuarrion Line to, to keep that going. It, the fact that the guy in the, in, the pre, in the presentation video states that it's a profitable game, I don't know... Who, what figures Russ has shown him because Russ himself has said on stream that Metcore Line had not been profitable for years not weeks or months or days years 
So how Macro Online is suddenly profitable again, I don't fucking know. And if it's the short term because of a load of people were in a lockdown and they would just put some money into the game, that's a short term profit spike. That is not a long term proof of concept there. The game has been on a downturn. It is also the statement that apparently Macro Online has about 10,000 active users every day. Bollocks. There's no way it has that. It barely reaches 1,000 on Steam, and I know Steam isn't the, the only metric for measuring it, but considering how many users there are on Steam alone, and how many people are supposedly playing it still on the launcher from PGI, nah. There's no way this thing's getting 10,000 every day. Bullshit. So I don't know. I think he's been sold a lie. But the, the one thing I'll, I'll give Russ credit for is that he's obviously good at being able to pitch like the, the product. Maybe he should have been in marketing. I don't know, because he, he pitched MechWarrior 5 to Epic, and he's he's pitched this to this investment gr uh, company now. So, I mean, congratulations. You know, you got $24 million. Great. It would be better if you actually announced that all of that money was going to get sunk into fucking MechWarrior Online and MechWarrior 5, where... Your actual player base are involved and are invested in your two products and not just going to be like have MechWarrior 5 wanked out on Steam and then just ignored for another 8 to 12 months because you've not given anybody any kind of indication of a roadmap, let's say, of what MechWarrior 5's post-launch on Steam content is going to be. We know that it's going to have the Heroes of the Inner Sphere pack bundled with it when that releases on Epic Store as well as a separate DLC. But what next? I the most obvious one is to you know jump the timeline forward a year, and you introduce the clans. But they haven't even discussed that. There's been no dev discussion, no uh, no live streams, Q and A, um, no kind of what's on the horizon with MechWarrior Five. And MechWarrior Five is arguably the easier of the two to really make some stuff for. But they've they've not really said anything. And MechWarrior Online, which we know. Uh, Darren and, and, and Matt Newman, I think it is, are, are working to try and collate feedback, which has been around for years. I don't know why they need to look for feedback that's just right there at the fingertips. It's all archived on the MechWarrior Online forums. But they're, they're looking for this feedback. They want some intel. They want to know what people want for MechWarrior Online. Well, you've got a list, and apparently now you've got $24.1 million. Uh, get that money. Hire some more people if you need to, and get that stuff out. And MechWarrior Online could become a, a profitable game again. As in a more long-term profitable game. A game that people will f tell other people that it's fun and they should download it. It's free. Have a go. It's it, it, it's great. It, I, I really enjoy it. But no, there's there's a, ooh, a mysterious IP. Original IP. Which means nothing to do with MechWarrior. Nothing to do with the Battletech universe. That That's gone. That, that five-year extension with Microsoft. That's just so they can keep running MechWarrior Online and occasionally probably maybe do an update for MechWarrior 5 now. That's it. I know it, it's cynical. I'm a cynical cunt. But I don't know what else we're supposed to draw from this because we know we, we've got a pretty strong fucking hint that PGI don't really care about MechWarrior Online. They've just held on to that license because that's all they have IP-wise. If they lost the MechWarrior IP, the company wouldn't exist anymore. So they needed to hold on to it. That's why they've convinced Microsoft to give them the five-year extension. But an original IP now for $24 million. As an, uh, an interesting thing that I read about uh, Marvel Avengers. Uh, don't worry, this 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 will come back. Marvel Avengers, I read today, hadn't made its development cost back, which apparently was somewhere in the region of about $69 million to $100 million to make Marvel Avengers. And we're talking about $24.1 million dollars to be spent on an original IP. This, this doesn't sound like it's going to be a triple-A development game here, guys. Even if some of that money does get portioned off into MWO and MW5, whatever's left is going to the original IP. We have to assume the lion's share for the development of the game, probably hiring other staff in and the such, maybe even, like, you know, you developing more tools and the such. What the fuck does that all mean? But it's also laughable that there's several graphics. I'll, I'll link the video below so you can listen to it yourself. You can see all the all the graphics and uh, a lot of the business jargon on there. As I said, I'm not an expert, that kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, it lists PGI as AAA development. What level of AAA development? When AAA is used as a term for games releases, that's like Grand Theft Auto. That's Assassin's Creed titles. That's Call of Duty. That's Battlefield. 
it isn't MechWarrior Online. MechWarrior Online is, I don't know what, A? Maybe double A? If that? Because, I mean, there's virtually no marketing for either game. I mean, MechWarrior 5 last year, remember, there was, there was maybe a few adverts on Facebook? That was about it. Fuck all. And you look at a game like the recently uh, released Assassin's Creed Valhalla, there was adverts all over the place. And there was websites doing articles about them. The websites barely touched either of the MechWarrior franchises. PC Gamer had a couple of magazine covers where MechWarrior f- Online was coming out. I actually bought that issue to get the, the camo skins way back when. And there was a MechWarrior 5 cover. And there may have been one other, but that that's it. I mean, throughout its entire lifespan, from 2012 up to 2020, there's been three articles written about them. And that's it. I mean, IGN doesn't cover them, Eurogame doesn't cover them, Game Spots doesn't cover them. Uh, I don't even think I don't even think fucking 4chan covers them for fuck's sake. I don't think any of these websites give a shit about the IP because it's it's sunk so low. So the idea that PGI is considered AAA, I don't know I don't know how he's pulled it off, but congrats to Russ because he has fucking worked a miracle on this one to get this investment. I don't know where this is going to go. I honestly don't know where it, where it can go. Uh, other than more disappointment, because I really don't think PGI are going to pull out an original IP that is going to set the world on fire and get shitloads of fans. It just doesn't feel like that, that can happen. And, you see, like, EG7, or whatever they're called, they actually have some decent studios under their belt. They have Antimatter, who made uh, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, which is a great game. I, I wholeheartedly recommend people, if you like first-person multiplayer shooters, Try out fucking Vietnam, Rising Storm 2. That is a that's an awesome game. Vermintide 2, really fun game as well. Vermintide 1 was quite good. Vermintide 2 was quite fun. Good cooperative, basically left for rat, you know, in the Warhammer universe. Uh, titles like that, those kind of development studios, I could see, you know, they they can produce some good stuff. But this, on the other hand, I don't know. And I can't see this, as I said, being a good thing for MechWarrior or its player base. So, um, yeah, uh, Russ, he, he's, a, he's a fighter, we'll give him that. He's, he's, he's not going out without a fight, and uh, PGI limps on under a new umbrella now, protected by EG7, but who knows for how long, depends. I mean, you know, this is the one chance that they get to pull something back. Maybe, uh, maybe they can make a good game with their $24 million. Maybe we'll see some console releases. They'll be cheap. No one's going to pick up either of those games on consoles. But, um, yeah. I think the last console uh, release uh, was Mech Assault. Those were fondly remembered. They're not going to make a game like Mech Assault. But, um, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, PGI's uh, new bold move. Uh, let, let's see how they do. Uh, let's let's see how that how it goes. So yeah, I'll link the video below and uh, see what you think of it all. Obviously, uh, I, I'm the I'm the cynical fucker. And I've I've had enough of their shit. So uh, I I can't see good things, but maybe you will. Maybe you think good good stuff can come of it. So let us know. And uh, until then, have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. And uh, yeah, after after that, uh, PGI made a post today talking about the future of MacWarrior 5. Uh, although sadly it wasn't any specific details on what they intended to do with MacWarrior 5. Uh, what they did state, which was the big news, is that with the coincidal release date with Cyberpunk being December 10th, which was always a bad idea, uh, they have decided to postpone the game's release on Steam, good old games and other platforms, Um, to 2021, spring. Nice nebulous date there. Uh, This also means that MechWarrior 5 will be coming out on consoles as well, specifically the Xbox consoles, Uh, maybe Sony in the future, who knows. At the moment, it's looking to be the first, I believe the first full transfer of a MechWarrior PC title to a console, because I know MechWarrior 2 came out on the PlayStation 1, but it was not like the PC version at all. Um... Whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. I'm not sure how big a market there is for consoles, especially for MechWarrior 5. So in the the rush of new, you know, next gen stuff, don't know if it really will stack up, but we'll see. 
how that goes with uh, MechWarrior 5, but yes, it's been delayed, so if you were waiting that entire year for the release uh, on Steam, you've once again been shafted. Uh, and December 1st, there's going to be a video talking about the reason for the delay, but I think they made it pretty obvious. It is the fact that they, they don't they can't compete with Cyberpunk's release. Many other games have also changed their release date. So, yeah, they sat in a scenario where, logically, it was good. You either had to bring it forward, or you had to push it further back, and I guess they didn't want to wait for a later date in December, so they've decided to go 2021. And apparently this means there'll be more stuff, but maybe they'll explain that come December 1st with this video that they talked about. And they mentioned it at the very end that Mechro Online will have more stuff coming. It will be supported because the, these changes are good. Basically, I think some of the money of the, the aforementioned 20 odd million dollars will probably be assigned to Mechro Online, but what that actually means at this stage, who the fuck knows, honestly. Um, especially this revelation. I feel bad for everybody who was waiting for Mechro 5. I personally was waiting for it to come out on Steam because I was going to get a copy on that and. My brother was going to get a copy, it was likely Furnica was as well, probably Davros as well, and we would have done some streams, Friday streams, running around in cooperative, uh, playing that new career mode that they were going to add with the DLC. Um, I had an idea for a series that would involve me and me and my brother playing, uh, playing the game as well, but now that's been kiboshed. So, yeah, we're just kind of... I think a lot of people are going to be at Shit Creek. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be a little bit pissed that they're going to have to wait a few more months. I mean, I'm guessing March, because um, I know that porting games over to consoles, it, there has to be a few processes that they have to go through, uh, certain um, certifications, that kind of thing, before the, the actual manufacturer and that will uh, basically give you the green light, plus they'll have to get in dev kits so it makes sure it works on the Xbox hardware, all that kind of shit, so they'll have to port the whole thing over and make sure it runs properly and... Uh, you know, it's not going to have any major issues, so that's going to be a bit of a extra workload for them. But, um, yeah, so uh, with, with that, again, uh, with that added news, what do you think? Do you, do, does it look rosier for PGI now, or is it uh, just same shit with an extra cash injection in the arm? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd add that little bit at the end. And, um, yeah, this time it's definitely bye. So uh, see you later. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.